Okay, here I'm going to talk about transformations. They can be confusing sometimes. Ooh, I should have like Transformers theme music going on right now. Ah, I don't feel like wrestling with that. All right, these are all of your transformations. There are, well, I have 12 listed here, but really it boils down to only having a handful. I just have the same transformation redefined a few different ways. For those of you who are great at memorizing, then maybe just look at this and memorize what all the transformations do. I, however, am not so good at memorizing. Um, I am a fan of using this language over here where you multiply the y values by a or divide, multiply the x's by a or divide. Um, I'm not as big a fan of the stretch slash compression language. However, a, a lot of teachers do that. Uh, so you can see all these transformations. You have your shifts and your multiplying and dividing, flipping, and absolute values. Another way you could think of it, and this is more of my way of thinking. This is not endorsed by the Math League of America. And I bet if another, if like if I had a half Newton college professor sitting here watching me record this, they would be pulling their hair out right now. But the way I think about transformations is. Um, it depends on where the transformation occurs. If the transformation is inside or is outside the function, then it's going to affect the y coordinate and it does the same operation. I'm going to show you what that means in just a second. If the transformation is inside the function with the x, then it will affect the x coordinate. So if it's with the x, it affects the x. If it's not with the x, if it's outside the function, it's going to affect the y. Um, if it does affect the x-coordinate, it always does the opposite of what you would think. Let's go back to this page with the transformations. If you look here, um, it is f of x plus a. Okay, plus a is outside the function. It is not inside the f of x. That means it's going to affect the y-coordinates, and you would do the same thing. So I could look at this, and instead of thinking it, of it as a shift up, I could think of it as adding a to the y-coordinates. Well, if you think about adding a to the y-coordinates, well, that would essentially shift it up. You're increasing the y-coordinates. Same thing if you subtract a from the y-coordinates. Um, if you look here, you have f of x minus a. Now the minus a is inside with the x. That means it's going to affect the x-coordinate. Um, but it says x minus a. Remember, if it's with the x, you always do the opposite. So instead of subtracting a, you're actually going to add a to the x-coordinates. And if you add to the x-coordinate, if you increase your x-coordinates, you move to the right. So this is a shift right. You can think of, the, of it the same way here. For these, where you're me messing with the y-coordinates, a number times the function, a is not inside the function, so it's going to be a times the y-coordinates. However, if a is inside with the x's, now it affects the x-coordinate and you do the opposite. So it will be x divided by the a's. You always do the opposite if it affects the x-coordinates. And the reflections, you could even think of it the same way. If it's negative x, you could think of it as negative 1 times x and follow the same rule you do up here with a number times x. We would divide the x-coordinates by negative 1, which would flip you over the, the y-axis. If you multiply the y-coordinates by negative 1, that does flip you over the x-axis. Uh, absolute value transformations, unfortunately, don't really follow these rules as well. You have to think of absolute values in a different way. So there is a blitz of transformations. Let's put some of them into action. When I do transformations, first thing I want to do is identify and isolate the parent function, maybe write it down so you can think about it, determine and make note of the transformations, uh, then we actually will do the transformations, and we'll do a little jig, I don't know, maybe chest bump your neighbors. Uh, let's look at this first function. Now we'll come back and graph these later, but for right now I want to identify the parent function and then list all of the transformations. Uh, well, to identify the, tra the parent function, what I will do is very quickly just white out all of the numbers. So I'm going to try to strip myself down to the bare minimum. Well, if I got rid of the 2, wow, that was a lot fatter than I wanted it to be. If I got rid of the 3, there we go, and if I got rid of the 1, I'm down to just the square root of x. That is the parent function. So if I bring those things back, my parent, my main function, is the square root of x. And you want to try to get it all the way down to one of those 20 functions you got to know and love. There's a, there's a whole library of functions that, that you need to be familiar with, and the square root of x is one of those. Now I go back and I look at my transformations. I have a 2, I have a negative 3, and I have a positive 1. So I have three transformations, and I want to identify what those do. A little note, all shifts 
need to be done at the end. You always want to shift last. So if you see any shifts, we're going to list those from the bottom. Any multiplying or dividing or flipping will go at the top. Uh, the easiest transformations are shifts to me. So that's going to be when you add or subtract and I see a plus one. This plus one is not inside the square root function. It's outside the function. That is going to be a shift up one, or you could think of it as adding one to the y coordinate. Minus three is inside with the x, so we would actually add three to the x coordinates, which will shift you to the right three. And notice I listed my shifts starting from the bottom. And it doesn't matter which one you do first, but I, I start my list, my shifts from the bottom. And the only thing I have left is this two. And that two, I thought I changed colors. That two uh, well, that's being multiplied by something. So this is now a stretch or compression, which I said I wouldn't use those words. But the 2 is not inside the square root function. It's outside the function. It's outside the square root of x. And so that means it's going to affect the y coordinates, and we will do what it looks like. It's 2 times the function. So it's going to be 2 times the y coordinates. And then we'll come back in just a minute and we'll graph that. But those are your transformations. We're going to double the y-coordinates, and then we will shift right 3 and up 1. Okay, looking at this one, I have f of x is negative 2 over x minus 3. If we stripped away everything, if we got rid of the 3, if we got rid of the negative 2, I'm left with x in the denominator. Now, you can't just have an empty numerator, so we would put a 1 in its place. But the parent function ends up being y equals... 1 over x, and that's kind of what we're going to think about when we graph this. That's the parent. And the transformations, I see a negative 2, and I see a positive, or a negative 3. Uh, the negative 2 in this one tends to confuse some people. So what I'm going to do, like people have a hard time determining what kind of transformation it is. So what I'm going to do is rewrite the function to make it a little bit more easy to see, a little bit easier to see, more easily seen, whatever. And I'm going to change it to negative 2 times the function 1 over x minus 3. Makes it a little bit easier to see what's happening with that negative 2. Uh, let's see, so my original function is 1 over x, and let's see, I see the minus 3 and I see the negative 2. That minus 3 is being subtracted from the x. It is actually in the denominator. It's part of the function. So that is going to be a shift to the right 3. And then I have a negative 2 times the whole thing. That negative 2 is not down with the x. It's outside the x. And it's negative 2 times the function. So we're going to multiply the y coordinates by negative 2. All right, let's move on to 2x plus 8. Now, this is the one where we start to make mistakes. Because people see this. Let's see, if I stripped away all of the transformations, I'm down to y equals x squared for my parent function. So hopefully you know what the parabola looks like. Now we have to identify the transformations. People see the 2 times, and they see the plus 8. So they identify two transformations. And the mistake is that people think we will move to the left 8, because you see a plus 8, and that plus 8 is inside the stuff squared. My parent function is something squared, x squared. That plus 8 is on the inside, so it is a shift to the left. However, it is not a shift 8. Before you identify any shifts left or right, you need to have a 1x. It needs to be 1x plus or minus a number. I have 2x plus or minus a number, or in this case, plus a number. So what I'm going to do before I identify my shift, I'm going to rewrite the function, except I'm going to factor the 2 out of the inside only. Now the 2 is still being squared, so I'm going to factor out a 2, but it stays inside the squared part. So I have 2, x plus 4, and then all of that is squared. So it looks like a shift left 8 is actually a shift left 4, and then it's 2 times all that stuff. It was 2 times x. We are multiplying the x by 2. So we're actually going to divide x by 2 when I do the transformation. Divide x by 2 when I do the transformation. And let's see, this video is getting a little bit longer than I like my videos to be. But you know what? You are smart people. You can handle it. So those are the transformations. And what I want to do now that I've identified those transformations is I want to go back and actually apply those transformations to the function. So I have y equals square root of x. Um, we're going to double the y's, then move right 3 and up 1. So I'm going to put my y-axis right here, give myself some room to go to the right. And I'm going to go up 1. So I'll move my x-axis, keep it down a little bit. 
and I always like to start with my parent function. The square root of x uh, goes through, let's see, it goes through 4, 2, it goes through 9, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3, so there's 9. Um, and there's my parent function, and I'll do it in dots because that's not my final answer. This is just something as a visual. I missed my points. And sometimes it helps to even do an xy table because I know, let's see, my original function, if y is equal to the square root of x, my original function goes through 0, 0, 1, 1, the square root of 4 was 2, the square root of 9 was 3, but then for my transformation, I actually need to double my y's. That was the first thing we said. So I'm actually going to go ahead and double the y coordinates that I just had. So that'd be 0, 0, 1, 2, 4, 4, and 9, 6, and that's the first thing I'm going to do. So I would have those points, then we will shift right 3 and up 1. So let's see, I'll, I'm going to have 0, 0, 1, 2, and let's see, I'm doubling my y-coordinates. This is a y-coordinate of 2, I'm going to double it to 4. This was a y-coordinate of 3, I'm going to double it to 6, but that's not my ending point. I now need to shift each one of those right 3 and up 1. So now I'm going to take each one of those points and go right to 3, up 1, right to 3, up 1. Right to 3, up 1. Isn't this exciting? Right to 3, up 1. And here is my final graph. I'll make it a little bit bolder so it stands out. There is the final graph of y equals 2 root x minus 3 plus 1. So there is the transformation of that graph and the, the actual graph of it. Okay, now let's see, negative 2 over x minus 3. We're going to start with the graph of 1 over x. Uh, this one I may just go ahead and center because I know with square roots, that was a little bit easier. You don't have negative stuff to worry about. So let's see, I'm going to center this grid. There's my y-axis, my x-axis, and my original graph of 1 over x. It really only has two sexy points to think about. It has the ordered pair 1, 1, and what I'm going to do to make this a little bit better is I'm going to change the scale. I'm going to put 1 right here. Oh, that was a little bit fatter than I wanted. Let's call this one, we'll call this two, we'll call this three. One, two. If you ever change the scale when you're graphing, you need to indicate. If you don't label the x-axis, I'm going to assume each block is one. So I changed this one to give myself a little bit, little bit of room to work. So I know that one over x goes through one, one, and it will go through negative one, negative one. Um, it will also go through, so if I plug in two, you get one half. If you plug in one half, you will get two, and the graph, the original graph, looks like this. It's going to come down. Oh, ah, there we go. This one's going to do the same thing. It's going to hit that point and this point. So I graph one over x. Oh, geez, that was bad. There we go. Um, now I need to multiply the y coordinates by negative 2 and then move to the right 3. Now hopefully at some point you'll be comfortable enough with transformations so that you don't have to list them out. So let's see, multiply the y's by negative 2. Let's think about my y coordinates. Right here my y coordinate is 2. I'm going to multiply that by negative 2. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So that point's actually going to come down 1, 2, 3, 4. The y coordinate of 1 becomes negative 2. So 1, 2. A y coordinate of 1 half, when you multiply that by negative 2, you will get negative 1. And so I multiply all my y coordinates by negative 1. Do the same thing with this one. It's uh, a y coordinate of negative 2. This is negative 2 right here. It's going to move up to positive 4. Negative 1 is going to move up to positive 2. And negative 1 half will move up to positive 1. But then we need to shift each one of those points to the right 3 units. Uh, now here's where you have to be careful because I changed my scale. So 3 is going to be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and then I'll do the same thing with these. 1, 2, oh no! 3 is about right there. 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. Uh, now one thing you do want to watch out for on graphs like this is the vertical asymptote. There is a vertical asymptote. When I shift to the right, that vertical asymptote actually shifts with the rest of the graph. So 1, 2, 3, and that way I can follow that when I get my graph. So here comes my graph. The horizontal asymptote on the x-axis didn't change, so I'm still going to follow that, but the vertical asymptote did move. So there is the transformed graph in blue. 
negative 2 over x minus 3. Good, good. Good, 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 good. Okay, for the sake of time, I'm going to let y'all do this one. Um, I'm going to pause the video real quick just so I can put it up. Pow! And there you go. It's really ugly and pointy. That should be more rounded, but when you divide the x's by 2, that's going to squeeze your parabola in from the left and the right. So it makes it narrower by a, I think that's called a horizontal compression for teachers who like to use those words. And then we shifted it to the left four units, so it should look like that blue one. All right, the last thing. This one to me is the easiest type because you don't have to worry about real numbers or, or real functions. Some people don't like it because you don't have the actual equation. But what I've done is I've given you just some vague function. It's a graph. I didn't give you the equation of it. Uh, it consists of a semicircle and a few line segments. And then I want you to graph this function by applying these transformations. Um, and so uh, doing this first one is going to be really easy. f of x minus 2. That minus 2 is on the outside. So we're simply going to shift down two units. Why is that so fat? So I'll take each of these points. I had one point right here. That point is going to go down to the top of the semicircle is up at a y coordinate of 3. I'm going to go down 2. And then I'll shift all the rest of them down 2. This point right here is going to go down 2. Uh, this corner up here is going to go down 2. And then we go, uh, this point will go down 2 as well. Uh, and maintain the same characteristics of the original graph. Please do not connect these with segments because it started as a semicircle. It should end rounded like a semicircle, um, even if it's a crap semicircle. That's actually pretty good. And then the rest of them were line segments. Oh, geez, for the love of all that's holy, let's fix that. The rest of them are uh, segments. So let's see, I'll go there. I'll try to make these as linear as possible. There we go. That one was easy. All right, negative 2x plus 1. I have two transformations. Um, the plus 1 is definitely a shift up 1. That one's easy. Outside the function, you're going to add 1 to the y's. Negative 2 is being multiplied by x in here, but that means we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to divide x by negative 2. So I'm looking here. My original graph had points here. I'm going to drop them in here real quick. Actually, I want to blow this up some. All right, so my original graph had a point here, a point here, 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 and here. All right, now I'm going to divide those x-coordinates by negative 2. So let's look here. I have an x-coordinate of negative 4. If you divide that by negative 2, it becomes positive 2. So this point is actually going to move over to positive 2. This point has an x-coordinate of negative 2. It's going to move over to positive 1 when you divide it by negative 2. That one has an x-coordinate of 0. That's not going to change. This has an x-coordinate of 1, that blue one. So when I divide that by negative 2, it moves over here. Uh, 3 divided by negative 2 is going to be negative 1.5. And 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. So now I have this graph. And keep in mind, it basically flipped it across the y-axis. And one of the transformations was if you multiply the x's by negative, or if it's negative x, it reflects across the y-axis. So now I have this shape. Like the, Oh, geez. I'm really bad at that. I have this shape. But then we need to take all of those and we shift them up one. So now I'm going to take all of that and shift up. It's going to go in, in pieces. All right. Well, I'll, I'll get it all in a second. So we're going to take all of that and shift it up one. Geez, I really have to move the points individually too? Oh, for the love of all that's holy. Come on. There we go. Right, the zero and the one moved. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, so there's some transformations. Um, and there was one more I wanted to do. This one we'll talk about in class. Uh, this video is already 19 minutes long, and it's, it's a little bit longer than what I intended. So we'll uh, talk about the absolute value one in class, and we'll do the rest later. Yay. Now dance.